a lot of take a look at all of those builder huts really deep in that core let's see if they can repair anything and make sure that those dragon based attack maybe it's going to crumble this is a rapid fire hit from Shao, and he is moving in hot and fast with these dragons Fire spreading all over the base with rages and ready to back up with freezes as well. Those dragon riders tack on directly to enemy defensive buildings while the dragons help clean up the rest. I know most of you have a great familiarity with what's going on right now, but keep in mind 50% gets the first star, the town hall gets the second star, and all 100% destruction is required for the triple. Shauna's having a bit of difficulty making his way toward the town hall, but the queen might be able to come in clutch here to finish the second star off. Is he gonna get the triple though, Itsu? That's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of power left the back, and uh, with this Tesla form into the Inferno Tower compartment, could mess up things a little bit for him. Uh, wait a second. He still has the Royal Champion. As long as those dragons in the core can push a little bit further, maybe take down the ground expo, this would be a clutch move to get this three star in. And Woody, take a look. He still has the king ability, but the expo didn't go down. Do you think that's a problem? It might be an issue here. It is set to ground, though, and so it shouldn't cause any problems for the dragons if they can just manage to get through this multi-inferno. It's deeply buried inside the space, protected by Teslas and a wizard tower out there. Royal Champion tosses the shield, though, and I think that's going to be it. That looks like our first three star of the day in rapid fire mode. Just a minute and 30. Sean had plenty of time left. Congratulations to him. That is a strong way to start for Team Bangladesh. That's a really, really strong start. That's exactly what you want to do as a newcomer into this tournament. Obviously, like with knowing that so many people are watching, you really don't want to like get into one of those stress uh, and pressure situations. You really want to like lead the series. And this is exactly what they did with this first attack. Really clutch the E-Star. And now it's back to QSFN. Kind of like tying up the series because like at this point all they can do is tying things up it's not like they can get an advantage at this point but three stars would be awesome to make sure that this pressure game is getting pushed back to team uh, Bangladesh. but it's not going to be an easy one at all we have the next base coming in which is going to be a really interesting looking one um and we have leo now coming in with the queen charge lado this was of the most entertaining attack at the moment i feel like because a lot of the pros are adding up the king with the warden together like we have seen for ages forever pretty much the warden with lalo but now really people like to run the king with the warden let's see if that's going to work on this one or if he's going in with something completely different after this tunnel charge i guess yeah, this is an aggressive charge in here with the Queen using that balloon, though, to insulate her from the single target Inferno and protect. It's good news for him to catch that tornado trap early because it means that it will not be spinning around the balloons, which are a lot more vulnerable to that slowdown effect. Taking damage uh, is not what they want to do. We want to keep that Lava Hound out in front as long as possible. But Leo has actually gone for a really deep Queen charge on this approach. He only brought one Lava Hound. Uh, for this charge and that means that he's expecting to get lots of big damage against those air defenses two of them seem to be available from that left side compartment after the queen already has grabbed that town hall for the first star yeah and a really interesting clan castle choice a triple ice golem clan castle which you don't see that often but maybe they were expecting some sort of smash attacks that's like where this clan castle is really really thriving and getting a lot of value but now we see the king do we see the warden or is it just going to be the king maybe with that royal champion to take down that scatter shot but so far everything looks strong but he won't be able to access this core there's no more wall breaks left the air defense is shooting at the healers the first healer is going down and now he needs to get more value. There's the Royal Champ and already the Slammer coming in to make sure that this dive into the core, into all of the heroes at once is going to work. And that's going to be a heavy one, uh, Woody. Leo has sniped that air sweeper and that is his signal to send in reinforcements. The Lava Hound is in and with those balloons floating in up front, that right corner is going to get demolished. Keep an eye out though for that scatter shot keyed in on the top side of the base. It can deal lots of splash damage if it targets onto any of these balloon clusters. Invisibility spell in the center there, but it's not enough to protect them from the air bomb that just went off. A dragon is going to finish off the multi-target Inferno, but the rest of these balloons are just getting picked off and BOOM! Massive destruction on the right side corner there. It's this last bit of loons for the finishing blow. Yeah, and they tried to get on top of the scatter 
but it's not working. The scatter shot is keep staying up, and now Warden and Queen have to join up forces to make this work. He has only 25 seconds left in this attack. The haste spell is getting those headhunters, getting this minion closer and quicker to those buildings. But time is ticking. Yes, the Queen ability is still left alive, but this court, like this scatter in this compartment, is could be all the difference. Queen ability. The question is, when would he? Now the ability to use... Oh my goodness, this is so close. The Warden! The Warden is super clutch, and you can see it in the face of the player. He is excited. He is getting that three-star to tie things up. But wow, that was so close. Razor-thin margin there of victory. And you know, I guess he was holding on to that Queen ability to use it when he thought that she would be cracking in against that wall. Wanted to make sure he didn't waste a single point of damage. But yeah, those archers that come in when the Royal Cloak is popped are also really helpful for knocking down buildings at the end. And you got to imagine the jitters that were going through Leo's hands right there. Nonetheless, he pulls off the victory and that'll keep this war tied up at a one and one. Uh, perfect hit rates for both squads so far uh, on both of these triples, Itsu. Yeah, and I feel like right now it's really interesting to see like the meta of bases. Like, I think the last qualifier we have seen a lot of anti three star setups, but this time it's more like legend oriented, at least so far. Diamond shaped bases and overall the setup of them looks really legend concentrate, I want to say. So let's see if this one is going to work. It's going to be a Queen Charge Dragon Rider and take a look at that. He just barely missed all of those traps with this blimp around the town hall. Let's see if this is going to work. A freeze for the Singer Fern Tower. The bottom side is to push the king in there and get that Singer Fern Tower. Maybe, but the clan castle and skeleton traps. Oh no, Woody. That is a lot to deal with right there in the center. Kamal G was going to adapt with the invisibility spell, protecting that king a little bit longer. Try to chop Ooh. through this eagle, but he goes down. Devastation for Kamal G's attack, and he needs to adapt immediately to respond against this. Super Minion still filing in against this Archer Queen who did not go into the bottom compartment. Balloons are not going to get the job done either, although they do crack into that Inferno Tower. Finishing it off could give him another leg up uh, on knocking apart the Eagle, but he certainly did not get what he was expecting for that with that uh, first charge, Itsu. Yeah, the Eagle is again like on full HP. The builders did their job repairing up the Eagle and he invested already so much with the oh loons, my. with the blimp and so on. Eagle is activated early and all the first couple of black mines are hitting those Dragon Riders hard. The Royal Champion on the other side might be taken out with those headhunters. More than ability to cover all of them. Are there any spring traps? This right now is the meta to play spring traps against the headhunters, but they, can, they are reaching their target, like the target of the Royal Champion. Royal Champion is going down and now it's all about those Dragon Riders getting the value which they need to get this three storm still maybe this is an incredibly aggressive and powerful play from kamalji but he knows that since he knocked down that town hall early in the match he is willing to risk it and put it all on the line with a massive offensive in the right corner throws down the freeze to protect the world champion as best he can but she will go down after all and it's really just going to be about the cleanup troops along the outer right edge against this archer queen on the left edge racing to get to the center as quickly as they can but having to dodge a single target inferno at the same time queen is gonna soak that fire and with her going down kamalji is just gonna have to hope that he can get a lot of cleanup along these outer edges it doesn't seem that a three star is gonna be possible here itsu no it looks like time is running out as well then obviously all of those traps which just came up to take down the heaters but it's 24 seconds either way take a look at this army camp on the far right side time is going to be an issue anyways but as well percentage is such an important it. thing wizard the wizard is coming back wait a second 10 seconds can you do that no no way no way not in a million years not possible <laughs> oh it's brutal it came so close with maybe just another five ten seconds he would have gotten the triple surprised me in fact that he was able to even just take down that single target inferno up in the top corner but uh, i think maybe if he had cracked in a little bit harder in the bottom compartment knocked apart that eagle sooner that could have been a triple very close attack itsu yeah, and I feel like you have to give the shout out to the base builder as well because he expected the king down there with the entirety of the Tesla farm. We saw a lot of the ground skeletons um, placed down there, which really deal like forced the king ability early. The giant bombs, like what's really nicely done on the defensive side, 
and forcing him to use too many loons early on to take down the single phone tower the eagle not going down early but now we have the next to take on our way this is more like a base which i would have expected from those teams it's a pretty classic looking anti three-star base and it's going to be another queen charge alalo attack something which can look so cool and sometimes it's so strong to be honest this far left side might be looking like a king one combination i have to say this is right now my favorite combination because it's so strong meanwhile wait a second that queen is struggling quite a bit there's the rage don't use that ability too early like you want to have the ability close to the core just to make sure that your queen is even surviving against a lot of damage woody yeah, that's a lot of firepower coming in against her, and Keitano's going to have to split his attention between dedicating uh, his protective prowess to keep her up, as well as this Law Loon. Again, only one Lava Hound this time, signaling uh, that QSFN really think that there's a lot of vulnerable bases on the Bangladesh side uh, against this type of hit. If you're able to pierce through and grab those air sweepers uh, and knock apart any splash damage structures that could really threaten those loons, especially this scatter shot that the queen should have easy pickings for, uh, this is a good base identification from Keitano. Eagle Artillery is firing away at the king, and he's going to have a bit of trouble with that single target Inferno. Good free spell to protect there. I think that the phase one of this attack is looking brilliant, Itsu. It's looking really good still, though. Oh, there's the head on the coming. And I was questioning, like, why isn't he wall breaking on the expo compartment? Because then he could actually reach a lot of more things. But at the same time, the multi inferno tower would not go down. But now the Royal Champion is having a lot of problem with all of the DPS, which is coming in. And take a look at that. I think we're like, there were like three ground skeletons. So as well, the base builder of Team Bangladesh are doing an amazing job of trying to somehow predict those charges. But so far, the queen is still alive. With, uh, with still with her. Okay, never mind. The ability is gone, Woody. But the Lalo just has started. She's popped it, and great job to Keitano. Also protecting those balloons by using the Royal Champion as bait for that scatter shot. Those balloons are still nice and healthy up top, insulated with the Grand Warden's life aura. That Eternal Tome popped out in the perfect timing to protect them from the biggest trouble out here on that top side of the base. As they cruise wow. through easy, straight to the last line of defense, Keitano actually hits a lot of bombs out here. Oh my <laughs> goodness, the humanity! All these balloons dropping to the floor, but it is not going to be enough to stop Keitano this time. A fist pump in the air, and QSFN will be on top through the mid-war. Yeah, it's always the coolest just like to see the reactions of the players like Keitano getting hyped up, getting this three-star to take the lead actually in this series. It's still incredible close, obviously, but they have the one-star lead at this point which could get carried later into the match, obviously, as well. It's always easier said than done, though, from our standpoint, because we can just say, like, in theory, if A they keep three-starring... <laughs> I mean, in theory, if they keep three-starring, they win this match, but it's just theory, obviously. So let's take a look at the next one. And Team Bangladesh, though, they need to three-star this one to stay close to Kyo's FN. And we see one of the strongest strategies again in the current meta, where we see the dragons, dragon riders, and this blimp into the town direction. No clone whatsoever, just a ton of rages and freezes for this one, Woody. There is no break pedal on this crazy train. Soft Deal is moving in just and hot and fast as the first attacker from this squad. And with dragons and dragon riders ready to keep this competition hot, they are doing their best to power through air skellies in the center with rage spells heating things up. Soft Neil has used the world champion up at the top right corner to knock apart that multi-target inferno. And really kind of the last thing he's got to worry about now is the eagle and the scatter shot. But they might be proving too much for this attack to handle. A big mass dragon army is super powerful, but it has got to move awfully fast. And that is not something it's done this time around. Cleanup crew over on the right corner is going to have a bit more work left to do. Even with two abilities left, though, and a free spell, I think that there is way too much base left. I don't know. Never underestimate those heroes. Like, really, heroes are strong in Clash of Clans, especially with the Royal ability, just easily. Oh, wait a second. That freeze was missed. But see, the scatter oh. is going down, which is clutch. And with those attacks, you really barely have any problems with time. With the Queen ability still left, we now have to wait. Is this going to work in 1 minute and 30 seconds? There's uh, some damage left in this base, depending on when he has to use that queen ability. But this unicorn is so strong, can heal up the queen all the way to full. But it's time. One minute and 15 seconds. Woody, what do you think on this one? 
this would be the sickest queen marathon <laughs> that I have ever seen if he pulls off the triple right here. She is having to take down like virtually 25% of the base all by herself at the very end of the attack with just a unicorn to help her out. Expecto Patronum, believe in great things and you may be rewarded. You might have just called it perfectly, Itsu, because this queen is getting topped back off. Sobno <laughs> is holding on to that ability for dear life, and he is going to get rewarded handsomely for it. Pops it right when she locks onto the gold storage, knocks it apart, finishes off the archer tower, and she is on fire! Softnail gets the three star for Team Bangladesh, and they will be staying strong in their third hit. Wow, what a comeback. Those heroes, like I always say, like as long as you can take down the X bows, like the 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 buildings which provide the single target damage to the heroes, as long as you can take those out, well, then your heroes can just push all the way to the back end. The scatter shot going down was the key thing for your, for his queen to reach every single building. And then yeah, it was just unicorn magic, right? Like the unicorn keeping that queen alive, like was just the key to the success of this attack. And this means Team Bangladesh did exactly what they had to do to stay close to QSFN. And now it's back to them again to keep pressuring back. And this is the next... Oh my goodness. We have lightnings. We have an earthquake. We have a lock launcher. We have a golem. This one. I love those attacks where pros are showing off oh how God. strong entries can work. So let's see if the entry is going to plan. And he can use that golem successfully. The fury of Mother Nature raging in the core there, knocking apart a multi-target Inferno uh, and one of those, uh, I, th I think it was an Air Sweeper. Oh no, both Sweepers are still in the bottom part, but there is a Wizard Tower there as well. Giovanni has made a donut out of this base now uh, as he starts rolling through with my favorite Siege Machine, the Log Launcher, a <laughs> woody menace uh, to get into that Town Hall compartment in the bottom. This is gonna be a long and deep dive uh, to start things off, but it could pay off handsomely if he's able to get the Town Hall, Inferno Towers, and the Air wow. Defense in the bottom corner. Can he make it that far? Yeah, take a look at the push so far. The Queen, though, has to redirect. The Freeze is there to make sure the single Inferno Tower is not taking the Queen down. Is he going now, redirecting? Yes, she is following that King into the Town Direction, but the Lava Hound, though, it's kind of sketchy. The Lava Hound needs to go down. The Ice oh, columns are nice, doing a nice. great job. Everything is just frozen. And we <laughs> now have that Hound. The Hound needs to pop. The Royal Chamber is coming in for reinforcements as well. But there is more Ice Golems freezing so up everything. Apocalypse. What is going on? So many Ice Golems are in there, Woody. It's an avalanche of destruction from Giovanni. Put the freeze on this bay from Kamal G. The Queen's distracted a little bit here, going up for the Elixir Storage, but she should be able to pat down to the bottom compartment and help out this Royal Champion on the final stab in the bottom with these heroes. But time is really ticking slowly. We're gonna need some quick fire hits from this Laloon Strike, and I know that he's got it in him. He just has to keep them on path with these haste spells. That is essential right now to make sure that they get all the way to the back side of the space in time to finish it off. Eagle Artillery will be firing away at them the whole time, and that really puts the pressure on these loons, especially when they're oh. so clumped up. My goodness, man, what is going on? There was just so much damage, but as well, the queen being clutched, taking down the defending queen. And now there's this one Lava Hound flying across. The, the loons have to get in range of that eagle to make sure that they're not getting shot at. Another haste is coming in, just pushing those loons <laughs> through. And this is looking so good. It's 40 seconds left. And you can see again, like with his reaction on this right side, he is pumped. He is getting that three star. And oh boy, what an attack this was. Perfect funneling. Perfect use of those spells, even though we had like an ice time surrounding that town hall. It was crazy. And that's exactly the attacks we want to see. Like that was a brilliant plan. Well, it was, yeah, a nice three star. <laughs> yeah, that eagle may be a bird of prey, but Giovanni is the apex predator of that hit. Congratulations to QSFN. They keep the pressure going as they fly high above the competition fully uh, kitted with perfect hits so far and living up to the expectations uh, set before them with that high 13.5 uh, average star per war.
they keep this up and they will be on top in the upper bracket uh, and going for another really tough war later on today. Yeah, I mean, let's see uh, how many more matches those teams have to play. But now we have the next team for Team Bangladesh coming in. It's going to be another Queen Shots Dragon Rider. And it kind of feels like Dragon Riders versus Lalo in this matchup. Like QS events so far use a lot of Lalo attacks. Team Bangladesh is now going in with their second Queen Shots Dragon Rider. And let's see what he's charging for. So far, just coming in with the healers. A good coconut do. We have seen this now many times that people are just putting all of the red bombs to the outside just to trap some healers because if those healers are getting hit by a lot of red bombs at the same time, those healers are gone and you're just starting a queen charge without any healers, which is turning a queen charge pretty much in a non Queen shots, yeah, that, that's right. So, not easy to recover, but, well, let's see if he can make it work, because on this one, there are all of the hitters left, Woody. Well, I gotta give him faith and credit, because he told us before the war started that his strategy is to just grind hard and watch as many streamers as possible to get the best view of the war scene overall. Queen Church Dragon Riders is his preferred strategy, and Stefan is going to make the most of his opportunity here in the World Championship to give Bangladesh a chance in the upper bracket. Queen is making her way toward that scatter shot, just hoping that those healers are able to dodge the splash damage coming out from behind him. CC troops are streaming out, though, and that is going to be another thorn in his side. He'll have to finish them off with poison spells and to try to keep this queen alive. He's forced to use the ability here as he is sending in the Dragon Riders up top. This is a difficult attack to manage, but Stefan is doing it well. He is doing it incredible well, but now everything is relying on that blimp. Flying towards the tunnel, the tunnel needs to go down with this one. There's the freeze to make sure this blimp is surviving. It's going towards the tunnel. Tunnel should go down with this rage. And this queen is still pushing strong. He's using the visibility spell to keep the queen alive. The dragon rides are pushing as well. The royal champ is coming in as well. The king is on the outside, still left alive. Woody, this attack is looking brilliant with another freeze still left to use. He can decide, is he going to freeze for the queen? Is he going to freeze for that royal champion? He has all of the options in the world. He's deciding against saving his queen. As long as this royal champ is staying alive, Woody, I think we're going to, we're going to witness another three star in this match. Incredible job from Stefan. The sun shines upon him today. He told us that if he wins this tournament, he's going to meet his team as soon as the pandemic begins and go on a beach party together. <laughs> well, you know what? I think he has earned some fun on the beach from this hit. Stefan from Team Bangladesh moves forward uh, with his head held high. Congratulations there. Yeah, that was a really, really clean attack. Like, just taking a look at the wall breaks, I feel like it's a really already, like, mastering the pathing of wall breaks. It's sometimes not as easy to predict that pathing, but just this attack showcased how important it is to actually train this, this wall breaker placement and how much you can actually achieve with getting those wall breaks right. The queen directly into the core, getting down the entirety of the core, creating pathing for the Dragon Riders, and that was just brilliant like really brilliant done so really good job to him right there but we already in the next attack loop zero is coming in and Woody so far loop zero is like uh, I think yeah like he's with the perfect hit rate in this one so let's see if he's keep going perfect because this would be a really good boost for QSFN which are so far in this match perfect as well yeah, you are absolutely right about that. He is six for six already, and he has brought a really interesting complement of troops for this queen charge to start with, holding on to an ice golem, not sending it in just right off the bat, but likely uh, to see support for one of his heroes, at least in the dive here. Loop Zero is holding on to two Lava Hounds this time, so it's a bit more of a deep commitment for the aerial attack, not using healers to keep a queen charge topped off and instead just going in uh, for a light kiss over on this left side corner. Meanwhile, it's going to be the heroes on the bottom that get the ice golem. Royal Champion and Barbarian King cracking through compartments as best they can. Super wall breakers giving them the entry point to the scatter shot even. Nice read here from Loop Zira. And he's going to keep on working in Noridetsu. What is he even getting that single for tower? That would be clutch. Oh, and it's going wow. down. That was crazy. The Royal Champ now is trying to get down that scatter, which is going to work as well. So which means he already took down Tesla, he already took down the scatter shot, he took down the town hall. This is a really, really good start for him. And 
Let's see if he's going to be able to like get this, convert this into a three star. Raising up the Mutan front down in the core early. Really early ward ability as well to get those headhunters into the core. Take down those defending heroes. And so far, Woody, this is looking really, really nicely done. The loons are just overpowering the core. Yes, yes, two Mutan front towers in there. But those loons just don't care. He's just keep freezing them up. And they have no chance of returning any damage in this, in this attack. Wow, they may not be pathing directly to those defenses right away, but Loop Zero knows that they are about to make a monster cruise toward the top. Nothing short of a barrage of air bombs would be enough to stop them, and that is not going to happen <laughs> with the Dragon Rider and the Grand Warden flying in out front to protect. Great job here from Loop Zero. QSFN will remain in the lead with a perfect war so far. This will be their 12th star claimed and only needing one more for the, dare I jinx it, a triple fiesta, <laughs> the 15 star possibility on the board here, leaving Team Bangladesh doing very well, but maybe I mean, still just short a little bit of emerging victorious in the upper bracket. Yeah, you said it, Team Bangladesh is doing incredible well, actually, but QSFN just looking too strong at the moment. They're like smashing bases left and right, and this attack as well from Loop Zero looks awesome with this Lalo just really surgically getting the Lalo, pushing into the core, using those freezes to perfection to make sure that those multi towers, which typically are a big threat to loons, like loons are not that tanky, but those multi towers are a big counter, but with just keep freezing them, that was a good way and we see another Dragon Rider attack from Team Bangladesh, and it's the Queen Charge. Let's see how he's ex approaching this base. There's the blimp from the Town Hall. There's a couple... Oh, wait a second. There's the NATO Trap. And there is a ton of giant bombs. Is he able to take that Town Hall down? That's the big question. Wait. Big commit from oh. Grabby. Oh, and he gets what? the CC pull out as well. The Queen's not going in, though. He needs to be able to crack into those walls ASAP. Royal Champion gets the toss, and the shield will finish off the Town Hall in two. Oh no, he had to, like, it was really good quick thinking, but the Royal Champion was not planned for this one. The NATO Trap, he tried to save this with the invisibility spell to make sure that his Sinky Goblins stay invisible long enough, but just these traps, they were like small bombs pushing those Sinky Goblins away. And now he has to three star this with pretty much no Roy Champ at all because the Roy Champ was not planned like this. More coconut dunes are coming in. The Queen Charge so far, you have to say, is looking great. But still, is it enough value to make sure that he's three starring this base without a Roy Champion, which is not easy? Like the heroes are being so strong at the moment. So having to attack without one of them is not an easy task at all. The Queen has to go now towards the left side, take down as much as possible, take down the defending Singham Fern Tower and the defending Queen to make sure that the Dragon Rise can start from the top side. And he has to start soon. It's already at one minute and around about 30 seconds, Woody. So Dragon Riders, when and where? Good timing on that free spell. He's gonna have to drop another on the enemy Queen to keep his own alive and healthy. But meanwhile, his healers are going down. Inferno Tower is burning through them. And even with a jump spell, that queen is not going to be able to get over the hedges soon enough to protect her healers. With that, Rabbi's in a lot of trouble now, but the Dragon Riders are moving in hot. Protected by the Eternal Tome, they'll have insulation against that scatter shot. They're cruising for a bruising, though, four on the outer edge and needing a lot of help. The Rage spell is going to get them onto the air defense quickly here. Ground targeting expos will not be able to lock on. 50 seconds left for cleanup, and he's got a lot of minions along the outer edge as well to help. Can he pull it off, Itsu? Oh, it's going to be so close. He tried to tank the oh. back and air defense, but the Warden and the air defense, just the combination, is so much firepower. Now the attacking Warden and the too Dragon Rider much. trying to somehow save this, but the defending, deep, like the defenses, are just too strong at this point. And just imagine, there's a Royal Champion left in this attack. This would have been oh. the three star. But again, really strong base building from QSFN with that NATO trap completely messing up that blim to make sure the town are not falling. But at the same time, you have to give those props to Team Bangladesh because I felt like it was so quick thinking using that Royal Champ ability because otherwise we see a lot of times that people like try to think about how to save this. But at this point, it's too late because the builders repair up the building again. So really, really good job of saving this. It was not an easy task at all. But now, it is not going to be easy for them overall to win this match, Woody.
right? Two misses against a team that's gone perfect throughout means that they would have to get the triple on their last hit and pray that they can get a miraculous one-star defense. Very unlikely against a Brazilian squad that has proven uh, so effective and strong against many uh, tough opponent. So P Caster has the chance now to close this thing out for QSFN and lead them on through the upper bracket against Bad Zinger waiting in the wings. The two star here is sufficient, uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, even a strong one star might be able to put them high and over the top. But expect nothing less than the triple because we are looking for a perfect war from QSFN. P Castro moving in rapid, quick up in the top left side here with dragons and dragon riders. Loons as well to support out in front. Trying to catch some seeking air mines, but haven't seen many of them yet. Battle blip directly toward the town hall, protected by the eternal toe. Will get the drop in that top compartment as long as there isn't a tornado trap to slow it down. And no, it makes it all the way there, it's a it makes it all the way there, and this town hall is gone. Even the nato trap is getting triggered, and it's rotating the troops, uh, yeah, a little to the bottom side to trigger even more traps. Now everything is relying on those dragons. We have talked about this already earlier. It is key to take down first defending heroes and defending expos to make sure your own heroes can finish off this base. To be honest, at the moment with two expos still left alive, was it? Yeah, two expos and the defending queen, defending warden. It's going to be hard. And there's a lava home coming out on defense. This is not going to be easy at all, Woody. Yeah, this is a really tough finish here for P. Castro. He's holding onto a skeleton spell in a rage, trying to get some more firepower stacked on for these dragons. But the defending Archer Queen is just annihilating his troops. He needs some way to lock on them quick. Finally, a dragon finds her and will start breathing fire down, but it is awfully low. Still oh. has a Grand Warden statue on defense, firing away. Skeleton slowing and distracting the rest of these attackers, but I think he's got it after all. By Jove, the triple from P. Castro turns this into a perfect war for QSFN. This base has been robbed and the cord has been calm. Congratulations to the Brazilians on their perfect war for the September qualifier starter. Wait, what? Wait, Warden, what are you? Yes. No way. Thank no you. way. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got afraid a little bit just this right there, but is hey, an epic the troll. Warden, <laughs> like, the Warden found his power again, like going for the last building. The Warden, Warden face off. And yeah, the attacking Warden was too strong. But yeah, perfect war already in our first match. That's not, some, uh, not something which we're seeing too often. So really props to both teams, obviously. Q7 is going to go up, upper bracket. And it's going to face Bedzinger. Yeah, great accomplishment from them. They are going to echo their performance from the monthly pre-qualifier. QSFN had previously defeated Bangladesh uh, before, and so this proves that that was no fluke. And with a perfect war, they are